Paul, the, the capital markets today are fascinating. Is if you look at the United States and you think about real estate capital and you, and you really look at it from a satellite view, looking down at the earth on a, on, a, on a pure contextual format, you have the left side of the balance sheet where all the assets sit in somewhat of a stagnant mode. Is you have, you know, there's not a lot of demand drivers for development right now, so you don't see a lot of new development coming on. And assets aren't trading at the volume that they've been trading at for a number of years. And, and that's not necessarily bad, is because you have a, a stock of existing real estate that's generating good returns. It's not a bad market. It's a good market. So we'll see that trade pick up as, as some of these economic uncertainties you know, come to fruition and get mitigated. Uh, the right side of the balance sheet is a little more interesting because you have to think about the three and a half trillion dollars of debt that exists in the United States, about half that's in banks, 20, 30 percent of it's in CNBS, is the banks are holding on to a lot of that debt and there's a real polarity between you know, the institutions that, that solve the issues and resolve their issues early and some that still have some challenges on their balance sheet. So there's going to be a bifurcation of how that gets resolved. If you look at the long-term market, the life companies have, have been and become active, and and they will continue to do to to, to uh, fund dollars into the sec into the sector up to their allocation. They'll be done. The real question is how do you resolve CMBS? And and if you look at CMBS globally in terms of its its pro rata share of total capitalization, it's a very small amount of global real estate capital. It all came from the U.S., and so the question is, did it work? And some people would say yes or no, and and I believe there's a lot of folks out there who think that we're just going to have CMBS 2.0 and be done with it, and I think we're going to have to have somewhat of an overhaul of that securitized product before we, before we do that, and this may be a little contrarian, but I saw a lot of CMBS deals that were done and that were done incorrectly. Uh, and, and you've got to have a real alignment of interest of all these capital players for a securitization to work. Um, and, and because you can't solve small issues in a non-commodity type asset class like real estate uh, the way the securitization was set up before. So we're going to have to solve that with lower leverage and greater margins and different options for resolving challenges within these, with these living organisms of real estate that, that need uh, the need decisions, business decisions made, you know, during the life of that debt. And if you look at the the LP equity and the and the, uh, the true common equity that's available for real estate right now, it's 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 a tremendous amount of uh, of equity. So you have somewhat of an imbalance in that entire global market of, of a lot of equity, you know, chasing fewer assets. So until we get some of these global economic uncertainties resolved, uh, I think we're going to have a little bit more of the same. Uh, but also within that, there, it becomes a, a really, really strong investment market for, for people like Portman Holdings.